All right, welcome to my So Red journey. I hope you see a crystal clear version of me because I've got a new camera to celebrate my first rare podium. If you don't know what I'm laughing about, go check out the last video I put out. But we're gonna be a lot more positive in this video. And we're just gonna explain what's been going on with my Sora strategy. If you've been watching, you've seen in the last couple of videos that I've adapted my strategy. And if you haven't been watching, don't worry, because I'm gonna explain a little synopsis of what I basically have been doing. So my strategy was that I'd taken a little bit of money out of so rare, and then my confidence came back and I thought, do you know what? Prices are so far down, this could be a great time to get more involved. So I put an extra ETH in, as well as what I'd put in before. I essentially was making an 8,000 pound strategy on my move up to Rare Pro. During that, I made a team. I then thought, there's some really good bargains here at Ajax. You know, I managed to pick up a super rare Pazvia, and then I got a daily blend, and I was like, start getting caught up in World Cup mania. You know, I was thinking about the Dutch World Cup team and how I could run that team, and they wouldn't be that competitive. I then filtered back into La Liga 2 cards, where I was like, these guys play throughout the World Cup, are reasonably priced, and aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg. Since then, what you haven't seen is that the second division tournaments came out, so the Rare and the Rare Pro. And I'm looking at the rewards, and say there's like 12 rewards in the Rare Pro and maybe 30 in the Rare division. I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, okay, that's not many rewards. And then you look how many people are entering. And in my eyes, everyone's still sleeping on the second division cards. I remember in the midweek, I could put out a team and I had a 30% chance of getting a reward. Throughout my time on SoRare, you know, the best kind of returns you're getting on average is about a 10% chance of winning a card. I think that's kind of fair. And in some of the underdogs, the specialists, it gets a bit harder. You know, if you compare them, they can go down to like four or 5%, depending on how many people are playing. And this is including just lineups, right? It doesn't matter if someone put in a team that's gonna get zero points, it's still gonna be included. So it's not a perfect metric, but it's a good metric, right? So when you're seeing 30%, so I was like, I've really got to focus on the second division because yes, the rewards are less, but there's still some really monster cards in there. There's still, you know, 2,000, 2,500 pound cards um, in the rare division. So I was like, yeah, I'll start in that. And this also transitioned me away from Rare Pro because if you know my team, I picked up a Rioja, um, butchering his name, of course, Super Rare, which meant I had one Super Rare in La Liga 2 uh, or La Liga Secunda, however you prefer it. But what that meant is that I'm competing at a disadvantage because I've only got one Super Rare and you could put two in, you get a 20% bonus. So that made me rethink my whole strategy and think, Do you know what? I've got one of the best players in La Liga 2 in the second division of Europe because I have Jonathan Vieira of Las Palmas. And I was like, well, if you've got the best players, don't play at a disadvantage, play at even more of an advantage, try and play into that. So that's essentially what I've been doing um, off screen. And I built the teams, I've given it two weeks, and this is how my kind of returns are looking. Um, it's two weeks since I made the video, it's been one week since I purchased some players, three weeks since I purchased some players. So we're gonna meet in the middle and say it's a two week strategy. And keep in mind, this is just an opportunity that was in the market that might still no longer be, which might no longer be there. It could still be there, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but this is how it's been looking. So looking at the team, I've got uh, my All-Star Rare Pro is how I you know, would transition or how I'd initially put my teams out would be a Panzer Super Rare, a Daily Blend Rare, a Defrutos um, Rare, Rioja as I said, Super Rare, and Greg Taylor from Celtic as a Rare. And then I've been playing in second division rare with Val as a La Palm, Les Palmas goalkeeper, Suarez a Les Palmas right back that puts out solid AA game, Vieira the all-star for Les Palmas, Azuni who's been hit and miss with Granada, and Botingin. Uh, I like to butcher his name, but essentially he's like 36 playing in Serie B and just putting out monster scores. I'll show you on Serie Day in a second, but I just want to talk about um, what went on. So I spent about four and a half grand on one team and four grand on the other team which is ridiculous. All-Star Rare Pro is very difficult to compete in. I knew it going into it, but it's probably slightly harder than I thought. But at the same time, Ajax, who are my key, you know, cornerstone of this, who should be putting up the massive scores, have been letting me down. You know, for conceding late, they've had two 1-1s, one they've got destroyed by Napoli in the Champions League. So I haven't earned any rewards, which is absolutely fine. We're two to three weeks into this strategy, right? No rewards, fine, um, especially in a division that's, you know, it, it's a bit more boom or bust. There's not many rewards, but when you do get them, they're high quality. Um, and then I look at the kind of appreciation or depreciation of the players. So, um, you know, so rare is one of those cruel games where when it's going bad, it's going really bad because your players aren't scoring well, so people are selling them. And then when it's going good, it's going really good because you know, when your players are scoring well, you're winning rewards, people are wanting those players, so they go up in value. So 
I've been losing money on the team as well. So, you know, we lost about five, five, six, five um, on if I was to resell the players today, which of course I'm not. Um, and that puts me at a return on investment of minus 12%. And when I say return on investment, I'm not treating this as a way to make money. I'm not treating this like stocks. So rare is not an investment, it is a game. But the best way how I play this game, because I'm so strategic, I am um, so competitive, is to treat it as an investment, if that makes sense. So what I do is I treat it as an investment so that I'm prudent with my cash. I try and allocate um, capital in the right areas that are gonna get me the best returns. And that's how I play the game. That's how I have the most fun out of the game. And that might be an idea for you as well, you know, because with an investment, you treat it that you could lose all your money. You treat that risk so you don't over uh, leverage yourself in it and, and don't put yourself in bad position. So that's why I say return investment. I'm not treating this as a financial product and of course none of this is financial advice, but I just wanted to put that out there so people don't get confused and, and like, this is a game, this is for entertainment. I get my entertainment from winning divisions and winning big rewards. So yeah, that's what it is. Um, and then if we look at the second division team, right, it's one of these going well, going really well. So I, I actually picked up these players at a really good price. You know, I did say people were sleeping on the second division and they're starting to wake up. I'm not sure if they're fully woken up, but, you know, Vieira, for example, I got him for a £1,000. He sold for £2,500. He had sold at that. I did put him up for a similar level, but didn't get any, any takers. Last night, an auction went under the radar. So um, I'm putting his value at about 2,137. I'm using the SoRare Tools valuations. Um, you've probably seen SoRare Tools, but if you haven't, go check it out. It's it's a really solid service and um, you know helps you value your players. I found it slightly more accurate than SoRare Data um, recently, so I'm, I'm using those. Um, but essentially, let's get back to the, the generic um, stats, right? You've got the cost of a £4,000 team, which for a second division rare team, it's probably up there, you know? It, this Valer's goalkeeper, it's going to cost me so much, but he's, he's got like a 70-80% clean sheet ratio in one of the best teams in the league, which, you know, you kind of expect to continue, maybe not at that level, but to a similar degree. Um, so rewards, it's uh, won £434. That's if you exclude when I thought I should have had a higher place. So you know, could have been more, could have been less. Uh, couldn't have been less, could have been more essentially. Um, and then appreciation, depreciation. Like I said, people were sleeping on these cards. If I was to sell my players today at like what I call a fair market price, I could make 1,200 pounds. In two weeks, that's ridiculous. And that's why I'm saying this doesn't mean you can do it. it it's, it's looking for opportunities in the market and I, I got in at the right time and I don't have an intention to sell them, but it, it does tempt you when you can lock in a win so early. Um, but then also, um, you know, looking looking at my rewards you know hopefully the rewards outweigh the depreciation over time because these cards aren't going to go up in a straight line definitely after the world cup i'm expecting the dip or after the world cup utility i should say i'm expecting the dip as well as just the increased supply they're probably going to slowly trickle down like every single card on the platform right but that will put me at 38 percent roi on that team which is outrageous absolutely outrageous in like two weeks on a four grand investment um so that is wild, but like I said, it's not to be repeated. These cards might come back down to reality. I don't know. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing until until I see a reason to stop, essentially. And then, of course, I wanted to include the subs because um, the subs can come into the team when they're valuable. Essentially, these are players that I thought I needed and thought were good value. So Vitolo, for example, is super rare for £134 that was injured and now it's coming back into the team. It's a no-brainer. Uh, Sobolov, um, I needed a striker for one of the game weeks, maybe at the quiet midweek. Can't quite remember, but I was using Play Sharper, which I've talked about before. I was looking at expected scores. Um, I quite like their expected scores, not for a truth, right? But it gives you a good estimation of how people are going to score compared to each other based on like an algorithm. Haven't read into the algorithm, but I found it reasonably accurate, right? And then I was looking at prices and no one came in Sobolev's region. Um, it was because he was dropped and then essentially, um, or he's dropped or injured. I'm no expert on the Russian league, but then he was coming back. He put up a big score and now you could sell him for slightly more if you wanted to. But the problem is Russia have this massive winter break, which is coming up. So it's a difficult one for what I'm going to do. I do have them on the market for sale, but whether people buy it on that price, who knows? And then we got the Potra. So he's just one of those players. He's, he's in the, uh, either Ghent or Genk. I think it's Ghent he plays for, who have midweek utility in the Europa Conference League, who do all right in their league. Um, he's a starter 80% of the, of the time. So it's like, yeah, for that value, I, I'm just going to keep him in my club and just filter him into, you know, wherever he needs to play, whether that's All-Star, whether that's on the bench in training, you know. Um, and then Dominguez, um, I spoke about this, how risky it is to have a, all of your money in a goalkeeper, right? If that goalkeeper gets injured, 
having the second division takes so much pressure off your team. So that's essentially what I've done. Um, not expecting to go up in value unless Valas gets injured. So I'm kind of hoping he goes down in value so Valas stays there because I think he's a better keeper. He's keeping me good clean sheets. And um, somehow, yeah, we can make £105 on that team. I think the key when you're talking about subs is to not take players at their top, right? You want to come in and get players at a good value. And I've managed to do that. It's harder than it is, you know, if I go out and say, oh, go and get players at a good value. It takes a lot of time. It takes a bit of luck and, and, and it takes um, a good strategy to do that. So I'm not saying everyone can do that. But when you see an opportunity on the market and they slot into your team, you know, try and take advantage. So um, the total cost, right? And I'll probably try and click the bait out. It's probably like £10,000, you know. Um, the way the sterling pound is going at the moment is they're going to be uh, in parity uh, soon enough, by the way, it looks. So that would be £9,300. But we can still say $10,000 at the moment or £9,300. We'll keep it sterling, uh, keep it close to home. So the total return on it so far is £1,112, but that's, um, I believe, let me just double check, that's including, that's just rewards, is that? Okay, so that's just rewards, because if I was to then include, if I was to then include in this calculation the appreciation depreciation, it'd be an 18% return on investment in two weeks on a very sizable investment. This is um, far more than I expected. I believe it should probably come back down to reality unless I go on an absolute heater in SO5. But I just wanted to update you guys on how my strategy is going because you know you make this big plan and it's starting to come to fruition. You're seeing you know the fruits of your labor. And this is what my advice would be to, to go back home, right? You can see I've made four or five spreadsheets on this team to get this in the best possible position. It cost me a couple of weeks in other divisions where I sold, you know, top limited players like Mbappe um, and had to sit on that cash until I was ready to make my strategy. Planning can be the most best return you can get on this game, right? If you plan prudently, one of the best things I did was make this um, La Liga 2 where I looked at the graphs and then looked who I wanted to buy and have alternatives. And then the second best, I would say, was, was this... Um, I'll call it a matrix of who's playing when. So I could see, you know, I've got quiet game weeks here and then, you know, Celtic's going to play every game week here. So do you want Celtic's goalkeeper? Because you're going to have, um, you know, six fixtures in a row, essentially. You know, trying to maximise your players, making them play together. You know, if you want to have fun and just buy the players you like, go ahead. But if you want to play like me, be strategic and try and, you know, beat other people on this game. Planning is, is is underrated. Get a spreadsheet, get a pen and paper, draft out what you think you can do, you know, um, go on so rare data, use a lineup builder to see where those scores kind of rank you in, in standard weeks. And yeah, this is how I'm looking so far. I'll of course update you along the way and I'll show you a little bit of other action that I've been making in the market. So Eric Bottigan here, I actually call him Bottega because there's a song where it's like, I wanna dance at Bottega. I'm not even sure what song it is, sorry for that. But essentially, I got him for £279 because he was putting up massive scores, but his average is high. You know, his last 40 is 63. So, you know, he's been playing in this league long enough where he probably averages about 63. And then I've sold him this morning for about £472. So good profit, but why would you sell a player that's on such good form? It's one of the hardest things to do is to sell a card when they're on good form, but it often works out better than if you had sold them. So I'm looking at his scores and I'm looking at his L5 of 76, and that's what people are gonna be looking at, some people, and, and probably more people are looking at the last 15 or 72. But for me, that's still inflated because you know across the last 15 games, right, he's got an assist from centre-back, he's got a goal from centre-back, he played top of the league and won. So when you're playing top of the league, you know you're going to get a lot more defensive action. So we got 40 this weekend, and he was my captain. Shout out. I'll show you my teams later. Um, you know, he's put up a 50 here. A couple, you know, other 50s, 45s, AAs. It's very, very hard to consistently do that. And if you are going to do that, you're going to be the best, you know, one of the best defenders on the platform. For me, essentially, I think he's overperforming his average. I think he averages about 63 on a 40 game basis to be scoring 72, which people are going to be looking at with, with more emphasis. It's time to let go. It's tough to say goodbye, but of course I do have a lot more depth in defense um, across my gallery in rares and super rares than I have in midfield. So it wouldn't be too bad to switch from a defender to a midfielder regardless. And I took a little bit of heat out the platform. So um, a very small amount, like 0.19 or something. So yeah, it's a good balancing act for me. That's, you know, 
pretty much all I've got to say about it. Also, another one, um, I just want to give out a massive shout out, being a Celtic fan, obviously, to James Forrest. 100 goals for the club, and I actually forgot I had his card in my gallery. You know, it's one of those collector's items I had of just, you know, a cheap James Forrest. He's done so much for Celtic that I thought I'd put him in. Um, if Surrey Data ever loads up, I'll show you. Essentially, he got 100 this weekend. He got a hat-trick um, in a much-needed game against Hibernian. And I just kind of cashed him in, you know. I don't know if I could have sold him for that price, but, you know, Essentially, he's not going to play for Celtic too often. It was great to have him come on, so I sold him for £3.57. Um, yeah, you know, even at the high end, I do like to try and, you know, sell into the hype. You know, this guy's just hit 100. I don't see him playing very much again for Celtic, um, or at least I don't see him putting up massive scores again for Celtic. Um, so took a little bit of profit on that. If we're looking at my SO5 lineups this week, which I'm sure a lot of you want to know about because it's been a little while, Celtic won 6-1. And I managed to pick the worst possible players to put them with. So Rio Hatate had an absolute stinker. Um, Celtic let an easy goal in. Not even sure how it happened. So that's going to cost your defensive stack. These things happen. Uh, All-Star Rare. This is an ETH grinding team. They're not really, any of them are set to play. Tom Rogic didn't play. But it's just one of those where I didn't have a midfielder. I didn't want to ask anyone for a loan. I didn't have the money to go out and buy one. So we hope a free player um, team can bring in at the lower threshold. It's going to be tough, but we'll see. All-Star Rare Pro. Um, Rioja, one of those players, I think such good value right now. Sorry, my camera just cut out there. New camera, it's going to have some technical difficulties. But I think I was just speaking about how um, Rioja here, I think he's really good value just because when he plays, he puts up big scores. But, you know, even when the team don't score and they've got difficult fixtures, 5, 10 AA, that's not bad at all, you know. You can't have good scores all the time, but when you do get good scores, you know, you're putting up 75s, you're putting up 92s. I really like that. I think he's back um, full time. He was playing in La Liga last year, so, you know, he's got that ability. So I think he's he's great value looking at the moment. And just continuing with the rest of my teams then, the common team, who cares? Champ Europe rare. It's got a little chance here. So we've got uh, Jose de Frutas just in his game right now. One I'm on the fence about, I heard how good he is, but I haven't seen it come to fruition kind of thing. I really need to put up a decisive. Before I bought me two decisives in a row, maybe that's kind of influenced me a little bit. We could look somewhere to strengthen there, but Eric Bottega here, what a man. 75 against top of the league as a captain, big respect. And of course, that's Palmer's clean sheet. Always helps early on when there's a red card for the other team so you can settle down. Azuni, the man that, you know, Put a monster score up last week to save me, but also has dropped in price really substantially. I mean, <laughs> the first time I got him, 870, and then he went down to 385. If you pick that up at 385, I genuinely think that's one of the best deals you'll find on the platform. Like, I, I have no idea how it went for that price because when he puts up scores, he puts up scores. You know, three decisives. Um, yeah, I, I think he's a good player. Maybe I overpaid slightly, but 300 is an underpay, essentially. Um, Celtic let me down. Thanks a lot, Ange, and the rest of the team. It's just one of those. You, you know, even if you get the right team, picking the right players, doesn't mean your players are going to score. Um, under 23, Guindo, putting up an 82 at half time. I've had this guy's one of a thousand. I have his only rookie card. I have his only one of a thousand. I have the only rookie card in my gallery is this guy. Salzburg very, very rarely get it wrong with their academy. He's from their academy, so I was like, I'll just go for this. Bit of fun, and it's working out so well. Um, I hope collectability comes into it a lot more. I hope this one of a thousand is cherished. I hope this guy comes on to the, be the best defender in the world. But until then, he's just going to put up nice scores in uh, SO5, I guess. I mean, look at his like averages here. So across the last 15, 63, and the last five, 67. The guy's a bit of a monster. He got a, uh, a he switched to another team in Switzerland, so he's doing well. We're just about to go live with the El Clasico. We're supporting Real Madrid, which is weird because I'm more of a Bass fan, to be honest, with the Messi Henrik Larsson links. But you know, Shemani and Vinny, they've been on Surf so long, and this is the whole thing about Surf and how it really messes up. Well, it doesn't mess up. It gets you to support players a lot more, and if the players play for the same team. You need them to do well. But of course, we've got our eyes on the wonder boy, Pedri. Big love for him. 
Um, and then the rest of the team's pretty dead. Frimpong, six, and El Karuni here with a 13 this morning. So that's how the teams are looking. In general, I'm really, really pleased with how the gallery's looking. I like having some strong limited teams so I can play with the best players in the world. Rare teams where I'm competing I, at the kind of top threshold, you know, I've got some of the best players in that league. And then it's super rare where I'm kind of punching up, you know, I'm trying to win the best possible returns um, with a budget team. I'm really enjoying my server at the moment. So I hope you're in the same position. I hope you learned something today. If you didn't learn something, I hope maybe in the next episode. So drop a subscribe. If you liked the video, please like it. And yeah, all the best to you. Cheers.